What's up, YouTube? This is Too Raw for TV. All right. So before I get uh, further in this video, I want to give a shout out to who did it this time for the contribution to the channel, ten dollar donation via the Cash App. Much respect. Much respect to you. You said great work. Thank you for you know your support. Thank you for supporting this channel. And he has a YouTube channel as well. And I want you guys to subscribe to his channel. Okay. Who did it this time? He'll most likely be commenting on this video, so just follow his channel and subscribe to his channel. He's a he's a fledgling uh, YouTuber, uh, YouTube content creator as well. And to anybody that wants to contribute to this channel, you can do so in the links in the description box below. All right. So um, after Game One, Atlanta came into Milwaukee and shocked the world so to speak you know look many people were anticipating the hawks getting just overwhelmed by the bucks but if you watch atlanta you know you look at that team you could tell i mean you could tell that that's a formidable team they did beat the first seeded philadelphia 76 okay um as a matter of fact, I believe they beat Philly at Philly three times in that series, if I'm not mistaken. I think they did it three times. So this is a team that's very capable of coming into your house and beating you. Um, they don't have pressure from the media, number one. Um, the media doesn't expect them or put pressure on them to win. The media will put pressure on Phoenix to win a game. The media will put pressure on the Clippers to win a game. The media, of course, put pressure on Milwaukee to win a game. But they haven't really given, you know, the, the, they haven't cranked up the pressure when it comes to Atlanta Hawks. So a lot of times when they're on the road, they're playing, you know, th there's no pressure. You know, there's uh, nobody expecting them to win. So they can play loosey-goosey. And just go out there and play. Whereas a lot of teams, they have definite pressure on them. Um, but there's still no excuse for the travesty that was the Milwaukee Bucks in getting the first game of the series. Um, Brooke Lopez was non existent. Players who were thriving in game one uh, for some reason didn't play in the second half. Um, you know, the Bucks were playing too much. Uh, outside, inside, rather than vice versa. And they weren't utilizing the greatest weapon that they have properly, in my opinion, Giannis Antetokounmpo. This game was different, okay? Uh, the Bucks made adjustments. Trey Young, who dropped 48 in the first game, this game was not nearly the same player it's funny because after the on the post game show that i did with 78 sports tv uh after game one i said i wouldn't be surprised if trey young comes out there and shoots five for 23 in game two and what did he do he goes out there and shoots five for 23 in game two now this was because the bucks made adjustments they put pressure on him uh he didn't get the same easy unbelievable look at this level the at this level in the nba but the way that these guys uh, handle the ball, the way they shoot the basketball, and with the restrictions that defensive players have now, you cannot just let guys get wide open looks anymore. They're, they're going to the, the best players, the best scorers, are going to have a career night against you if you do that, and that's what we saw in Game One. Game Two was a 34 point blowout. I think it was 125 and to 91. And it was even distribution for the Milwaukee Bucks for the most part. I think Giannis had something like 25 points, nine rebounds, and maybe something like six assists or something. Um, you know, and that's what you want for Milwaukee, you know, those nights when Giannis doesn't have to do everything. Um, and, and, you know, things seem easier for Milwaukee when guys are playing well and, and they seem to gel as a team. Um, but look, no matter if you win by a point or by 50, 
they still won one. And as a guy rooting for the Bucks, it really irritates me that Milwaukee dropped that game one that was a very winnable game. So now, instead of being up 2-0 going to ATL, it's still split. Still split. So Atlanta did what they had to do. Um, I will say this, though. If there's one little silver lining, if you're a Bucks fan, it's the fact that, if you remember I said Atlanta won, if I remember correctly, Atlanta won three games on the road in the series against Philly. But it also means that they dropped two or three games at home. And, and including at pivotal game six where they could have closed out the series. Atlanta does, to me, sometimes, with the pressure of closing out a series at, at home or the expectations that you're going to replicate what you did at Philly, at Atlanta, sometimes I've noticed some of their shooters, not necessarily Trey Young, but their shooters not step up. One thing I did notice about the Philly series is when Trey Young isn't hitting, you then have to worry about him being a facilitator. I remember there were some games where he had 15 assists, 11 assists, 18 assists, something like that. And that can kill you just as much. People are ooh and ah at the 40 and 50 point games. But a guy that's a playmaker and he's, you know, making life easier for everybody else and they're getting all these, that's just as damaging. So Milwaukee has to look out for that if you're rooting for Milwaukee. Um, but I anticipate game three, the ATL crowd, um, they're going to be raucous. This is the first time they've been in the conference finals. If I'm not mistaken, I think it's the first time Atlanta's been in the Eastern Conference Finals since 1997. Uh, maybe I'm wrong. Maybe I'm forgetting a year. Uh, but I think this is the first time they've been in the Eastern Conference Finals since 1997 when they lost in five games to the Chicago Bulls. So uh, this is something that Atlanta Hawks fans are not accustomed to be uh, accustomed to. Um, but we'll see. You know what I'm saying? I think it's still going to be a hell of a series. I think the Bucks are going to win this series. Initially, I thought it was going to be in five games. But now I think it might be more. It's possible Milwaukee could win the remaining games and get a gentleman sweep. But I think it's probably going to be more of a six-game series. Um, but tell me what you guys think.